Hey my kindergarten friends, I am so excited to do some learning about animal tracks with you today. Tracking is a lot like reading a story, but instead of the story being in a book, it's in the woods. So before we head out into the woods on an expedition, let's learn some of the basics. The first thing about tracking that we want to pay attention to is what is the print of the animal. Hey, I'm actually noticing I'm putting my hands out to you. Take your hands and put them out in front of yourself. And what do you notice about them? What's the shape? What's the color? What's the size? Are they the same or different? What's the texture? What do they feel like? Maybe there's someone else at your house with you and you can compare your paw print with their paw print. How is it the same and how is it different? That's going to be an important thing to be thinking about when we get out into the woods and we're noticing tracks of animals. Let's take a look at the prints of some animals right here before we head out. So I have a few different ones lined up for you here. And I'm wondering if you notice any of them. Well, you do notice them. I'm wondering what you notice about them and if any of them look familiar to you. I'm guessing that this looks familiar to some of you because I have been on expeditions with all of you. And I know that a lot of people in this group know that two lines in the snow or in the mud tell us that it's a deer. Or if they were bigger, maybe it would have been a moose. Anyways, that is one kind of animal print. How about this one? Anybody have any ideas about this print? If you were thinking a dog, you are really, really close. This is a print of a wild animal that's related to a dog. And if you're thinking coyote, you're really close again. It's a little bit smaller than a coyote. This is a red fox. In Vermont, we have a red fox and a gray fox. The prints look a lot the same. The gray fox is a little bit smaller than the red fox. But anyways, that's what their print looks like. Hey, how about this crazy one? This one looks a lot like my hand. Can you believe it? So this must be an animal that can really use its fingers to manipulate things, open things, get into things, maybe like trash cans. Hmm, have any ideas? If you don't, don't worry. This is a tricky track. This is the track of a raccoon. How about the next one over there? That's a crazy looking one. It has two big feet in the front and two little ones in the back? That can't be right. The way this animal moves makes it look like it has big front feet and little back feet. But I'm going to give you a hint. These feet here that are in the front are actually its back feet. It's just that when it moves, its back feet come in front of its front feet. Can you think of an animal in Vermont who has really big back feet? Hmm. If you thought of a rabbit, you were right. Hey, one last set of prints over there. Kind of a tricky one. We started with something pretty easy or familiar, and we've had a few more challenging ones as we've moved along. I think this might be the hardest one so far. If you're thinking fox or coyote, because it looks similar to the fox print that we studied before, that would be a pretty good guess because it has its claws and it has these toes. But count those front toes. One, two, three, four on the fox and this one has one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. So it cannot be a fox, it's something other than a fox. This is an animal that not a lot of people see because they move really quickly and they're kind of small. And check it out, they blend into their background. This is a weasel, and in the winter, their coat is all white. Except for, see this little tip of its tail stays dark? So it blends in really well. In the summer, its coat changes to brown, and then it matches the colors of forests and fields. That's pretty cool. Anyways, this is a weasel. And those were just a few examples of some different kinds of prints that we might find out in the forest. 
The next thing we need to think about is the pattern that the animals leave when they travel through the forest and fields. Learning the print was a little bit like learning your letters. Patterns are a little bit like writing sentences. Do you see how the prints string together in certain ways? So those are sentences they're leaving for us. And that gives us another clue. You have to be a really good detective to be a tracker. Anyways, you might recognize some of the prints that are on this pattern card for animals that we call walkers. They have long legs and they put one foot in front of the other foot as they travel. So if you're recognizing this two-toed print as our friend the deer, you guessed it. And the other one on this card was also one of the animals that we studied its print. So you might recognize the fox. A few other long-legged animals that leave a pattern that is a straight line that we call walking is the moose. Looks a lot like the deer, but it's bigger. Or maybe a bobcat or even a coyote. So those are a few examples of some of our walkers. Another way that animals move is called hopping. I bet you know which of our friends from up here was the hopper. Remember this? Big feet in front, little feet in back. And it's a bit confusing because when we think of hopping, when you and I hop, we put our feet together and we hop and we hop. But when animals that are called hoppers, like our friend the rabbit, hops, they have four feet. They have their four paws and their hind paws. And so we see all four of their prints. And when they hop, their back feet come around their front feet and they land up here. I am not a very good hopper, but I bet you are an excellent hopper. Why don't you try doing some hopping for a minute? There are other animals that we call hoppers that might surprise you. Squirrels are hoppers, chipmunks are hoppers, and even little mice are hoppers. That's kind of surprising, isn't it? It just means that their bigger back feet come in front of their smaller front ones when they move. Another hopper would be our snowshoe hare. Take a close look at that picture. And you might notice that those big back feet are going to land in front of where the front feet were. Pretty cool, huh? Next one we call waddlers. Animals that are waddlers have round bodies and short legs. Believe it or not, the raccoon is a waddler. The raccoon's print looked really different than this print, but that's okay because there are many different kinds of waddlers. A raccoon is a waddler. Here's a little picture of a raccoon. A beaver is a waddler. A skunk is a waddler. Possums are waddlers. And porcupines are waddlers. Notice the shapes of all of their bodies. They're round, they have short legs, and so when they move, they lift up both legs on their left side, and then both legs on their right side, and they kind of go from one side to the other. Hey, there's another waddler that I haven't put out yet who belongs to these big prints. This animal also has a round body, but you might be surprised because it's actually a really big animal, but it still has a round body and for the size of its body, its legs are pretty short. It's our friend the black bear. Whew, we've covered a lot. Walkers, hoppers, waddlers. Last one. The final 
group of animals are called bounders. Do you remember which card had a pattern with five toes in the front? And it looked like they were hopping along? You're right. Who's our friend the weasel? See how well camouflaged he is in that snow? He has some cousins that move just like him. They all have long, slinky bodies, and when they move, their back legs land just where their front feet were or very close to it. Here's a cousin of the weasel. His, he's the mink, and he's a bounder. You can see how long and thin his body is as well. Oh, here's our playful friend, the otter. He's related and is a bounder. Or you might have heard of a fisher. Fishers are also bounders. All these animals are related to each other. Hey, check out this photo nice and close because you can see how the fisher's back legs are going to land just about where its front feet were. Hey, so that's it for patterns, friends. We have learned about prints, and patterns. We're just about ready to head out on an expedition and do some detective work. Let's see if we can put all these things together into a story and solve a practice mystery before we head outdoors. When we learned about prints, it was like learning about the letters of the alphabet. When we learned about patterns, we were building sentences. When we put it all together outside in nature, that's when we have a story. And because we weren't there when this story was written, we have to pretend or we have to become detectives. Nothing about pretending, my friends. You and I will be detectives. So let's look at this and see what we can learn. The title up top says, Can You Uncover This Track Story? Hmm, I wonder what we'll discover. Some of the other things that it says is down here it tells us that this is a person's house. It tells us that this is a hen house. So some chickens live here and then the chickens have a little bit of a yard here. And then we have lots of tracks and footprints. These shapes here are what some trees would look like from up in the sky. This is called an aerial view. We're looking at this yard and this part of the woods as if we were birds from up high. I'm wondering what you're noticing. What are some of the prints that we see? Hmm, let's start right here because these look super familiar to me and there's a big clue. It tells us it's a person's house. I'm thinking that that's a person. And maybe they came out of their house and turned around and went right back in. I wonder why they came out. Huh, I noticed some tracks coming right from the person's house. What kind of animal might live with a person? An animal that has a walking pattern and has four toes in the front. Wow, that is someone who might be related to our friend, the fox. That could be a dog. Maybe a person has a dog and they let the dog out for a walk. Let's see where the dog goes. Do, 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 do. Oh dear, it's about to have an encounter. Right here, with another animal with four toes, who seems to be very interested in the chickens. Uh-oh, I wonder what's gonna happen. Your eyes might be following different tracks right now because there's so many there. Yours might be continuing to follow the dog who crosses paths with a fox's track. We don't know if the fox and the dog met, but their tracks crossed. Maybe you're continuing to follow the dog who goes all the way up here by the orchard. Or maybe your mind and I got distracted by the fox prince that came all the way to the hen house. Oh my gosh. And then went this way. I wonder if the fox got scared by the dog. Or I wonder if some chickens 
whose prints are right out here, got scared by a fox or a dog. Wow, lots of possibilities. I would love to find out what you're thinking about this tracking mystery. Maybe we'll find a way for you to send me your ideas. The dog continues all the way up around into the orchard. Oh, my goodness. There are more tracks. I can't believe all these tracks. It looks like someone came from this side and continued in a straight line, kind of far away from the house. How are they moving? Do these tracks look familiar to you? It looks like they go from the left to the right, from the left to the right. Sure looks like a waddling pattern to me. Oh my gosh, this crazy dog has already had an encounter with a fox, with some chickens, and now with a waddler. Do you remember what kind of waddlers we studied about? We studied about bears and raccoons and, oh, skunks. Mm, I've heard some bad stories about skunks and dogs. Oh, or a porcupine, or a possum, or a beaver. Wow, so those would be our choices of some kind of a waddler who traveled here, stopped by the dog, <gasps> turned around and faced their tail towards the dog. I wonder if you have an idea who this waddler might have been. And then the dog ran home and the waddler, well, of course, they waddled on. Hey, my friends, you can probably see that my track story map is kind of old. I would love to make some new maps, but I need some ideas for tracking stories. If you have one, send it to me and I'll make some more maps. Let's get our hats and coats on and head out into the woods for an adventure. Here we are, friends, about to enter the woods. I think the temperatures must have gone up since this morning because there are a lot of drops of water falling on my head right now. I'll take shelter under some of these trees. Come on with me. As I walk along, I'm noticing these droplets of water that are hanging onto the ends of the white pine tree's needles. And just across the path is a spruce tree where the snow still is held by the branches like an umbrella might do. Let's see if we find some tracks. Wow, here are a whole bunch of spots in the snow. Just a little ways from the spruce and pine trees where we just were. I wonder if an animal's been here. One of the things we know about tracking is you have to follow the track. So let's see if these take us anywhere. Hmm, kind of a dead end over here. Let's try down this way. Wow, fewer and fewer tracks and nothing in a line. Guess what, friends? These were not the tracks of an animal. These are splotches in the snow where rain has fallen. I call these trick tracks. Don't be fooled by them. Wow, friends, there's something here that looks really different than the trick tracks that we just saw. Do you see how they're going in a nice straight line? Let's follow them. just got a lot busier right here. It looks like there's more than one of whoever this is. Let's see if we can take a close look at one of the prints to help identify what kind of an animal this might be. Here's a close-up of one of the prints. What do you notice about it? Can you see the back end here and toes pointing this way? That means the animal was traveling in this direction. Let's keep going and see what we find. 
Wow, friends, I wish you were with me. We're getting deeper and deeper into the woods, and now we're going up a small hill. But notice, we're still following the same set of tracks. This line of tracks, my friend, is such a straight pattern. It has me thinking that the animal must be a walker, not a bounder or a hopper, or definitely not a waddler. But I'm noticing that the print doesn't look like our long-legged mammals. It's not a deer or a coyote. It's not a fox or a moose or a bobcat. Let's keep going and see if we can find out who it is. This must be a fairly small animal because I am having to crouch really low to fit underneath the branches to follow these tracks. Let's see where they're headed. Wow, my friends, I have been walking for a really, really long time. I am in a part of my woods where I have never been before. The only reason I felt safe enough to keep going was because since there's snow on the ground, I can follow my footprints back home. Let me show you what I mean. Here are my tracks following alongside our mystery traveler as they came to this small stream. It looks like they crossed over without any problem, but I think it's time for me to head home. Let's take one more close up, look at a print and go back inside and see if we can figure out who it was. There's one and there's the next one. Let's make a drawing of it with our hands to help us remember what it looks like. A long line comes down this way, and two short ones this way, and another short one here. I wonder what kind of an animal left this print in a straight line pattern in the spruce woods. One more time. Print, pattern, and place. Time to go home and do some research. Hey, my kindergarten friends. Thanks so much for joining me on that expedition into the woods. We've come back with a lot of clues. Let's see if we can tease through some of them and figure out whose tracks we were following. We did figure out out there that we've had, we had a walker. The tracks were in a straight line pattern. That tells us walker, but it clearly was not a deer or a moose. It definitely was not a fox or a coyote. And it wasn't a bobcat. Those were the walkers that we studied before we went out. We did not know what we'd find when we went outside. And it was not any of those long-legged mammals. The tracks we found looked more like this. And you know what, my friends? This is pretty much exactly the same size as the tracks that we saw out there. My phone battery died when we were out there, so I couldn't show you the measurements. So I picked up some sticks and broke them to match the size of the prints we were seeing. So I'm gonna line this up next to it just so that we have an idea of about how big our track print was. We know the pattern was walking. Now we're trying to figure out the print of what kind of an animal that was a walker, but was not one of these mammals. And if I line this up at about the zero and come about up to the top, look at that. That's about six inches long. That's a big track. If I look at just one of the toes, that's about three inches. But the whole thing, from one tip to the other, is closer to six. Anyways, that's what we've got so far. 
I wonder if anyone has any ideas. I'd love to hear from you if you were having an idea at this point. So maybe you can find a way to send me a message. Let's take a look at this chart of animal tracks because this might give us a clue. Scan over that and see if you can find any tracks on this piece of paper that looks similar but smaller to the track that we found out in the woods that look like this one. Hmm. Wasn't anyone related to dogs or cats or deers? Those look really different than this. Wasn't a bear or any other kind of a mammal? We only have a couple sections left at the bottom. Aha! How many people were thinking about this section? Read those words, friends. Bird tracks. That's crazy. I think of birds as up in the trees. So why were we following tracks for what felt like miles and miles in the snow? And six inches long. Was that the biggest chickadee in the world or what? Silly. It couldn't have been a chickadee. Chickadees spend most of their time up in trees. But some birds do spend time on the ground. Let's look at these four different prints that we see and see if we can narrow it down a little bit. Right away, I can eliminate this one because our track doesn't have this extra line at the top. If we had a line up here at the top, that would create webbing between the toes. That would be the print of a bird like a duck. I don't think we were following a duck because ducks don't walk in straight lines. They walk in crazy mazes all over the place. So I think we can eliminate that one. We still have these three here. Which of these looks most like what we have here? That's hard. They all have something in common. I would eliminate this one because the back end is really long. And I'm actually thinking, I don't know if I made that to really match our print. I might have to go back into the pictures. I think it was more like that, really. But anyways, this one here where it's long in these separate parts, that shows me that the, that is a bird that actually does spend a lot of time up in a tree, but it's a pretty big one. Those would be the track prints of a crow. And a crow does not move in a straight line like walkers do or like some big birds do. A crow would move like this. It would be hopping in the snow. We would have seen two sets that were exactly the same next to each other. So my friends, that leaves us with just a couple of choices. Isn't this amazing detective work? We've narrowed it down to two possible birds that we could find in the woods in Vermont at this time of the year. These tracks, would be made by a bird called a grouse. These tracks would be made by a bird called a turkey. They both can be found in the woods and they both can be found in Vermont in the wintertime. A grouse's track print is usually about three inches long. A turkey's track print is usually about five inches long. Something we have to be aware of is that our track prints were in the snow. And lots of times when we make a print in the snow, they actually kind of melt and stretch out so that the print is bigger than what the actual foot was. So our tracking conditions were a little tricky. I'm curious to hear what you think, friends. Was that a grouse or a turkey that we were following in the woods? And why do you think that? I can't wait to hear your ideas about this. Good luck. See you soon. Bye, my friends. If you have enjoyed this video, please visit our website to learn more about what we do and consider making a donation.